Hi, it's Katrina. Number 10, Ming Dynasty Tombs. The Ming Dynasty tombs are a collection of mausoleums built by the emperors of the Ming Dynasty. One of these is located in the old capital of Nanjing. There are 12 more belonging to other emperors, and these are all grouped around Beijing. As a group, they are known as the 13 tombs of the Ming Dynasty. In 1420, the Yongle Emperor chose the area on the slope of the Tian Shu Mountain to have a great mausoleum built for himself. The emperors that came after followed his lead and placed their tombs in the same valley. The very first ruler of the Ming was the Hongwu Emperor, buried in Nanjing, which was the original capital city. The second ruler was the Jianwen Emperor, and he was overthrown by the Yongle. The second emperor's gravesite remains lost to history. It was the Yongle Emperor whose burial site selection, based on Feng Shui, inspired the remaining emperors to construct their mausoleums. See, he had a good idea. They were off limits to commoners, but this didn't stop them from being ransacked and burned in 1644, when the army of Li Cicheng captured Beijing. The tombs of the royal emperors are quite extravagant, but recently archaeologists found some smaller graves also from the Ming Dynasty that were less spectacular. They were found in Nanling County by a group of villagers. The identities of the people buried here are unknown but it shows that people aside from emperors managed to make mausoleums for themselves during this period. And why not? Would you like to have your own mausoleum? Let me know in the comments below. Number 9. Statue in the Mud In the Egyptian city of Cairo, a truly enormous statue was pulled from the mud. A team of Egyptian and German researchers found the statue in a slum on the outskirts of the city, literally buried under soggy soil. The statue is about 26 feet tall and made of pure quartzite. The face of the giant stone monument suggests it was supposed to depict Ramses II. This was a rare and unique discovery, but not surprising when you know the location. What is today a slum was once part of the great city of Heliopolis, one of the oldest in all of ancient Egypt. It was here thousands of years ago that a cult came together in worship of the sun. Heliopolis grew to be the main city for all Egyptian religious activity for at least a thousand years. Today, there is nothing but old buildings and a rapidly rising water table, leading to the muck and muddy conditions where the statue was found. As for the great pharaoh depicted on the statue, he was also known as Ramses the Great. He ruled Egypt during the 19th dynasty, between 1279 to 1213 BC. What archaeologists pulled from the mud was the upper part of the statue and the head. It's in fragments and had to be picked up by a forklift out of the muck. You just never know where ancient history lay hiding, maybe even in your own backyard. Number 8. The Oldest Mummies New research has suggested that a set of human skeletons found in Portugal could be the oldest mummies in the entire world. Experts have reconstructed what they believe happened to these individuals 8,000 years ago when they died in Portugal's Sado Valley. Their conclusion is that the ancient people who lived here naturally removed moisture from the bodies, resulting in mummification. The discovery actually goes back to the 1960s, when 13 bodies were first exhumed from the valley. Each one had been buried with their knees bent against their chest, hunched over themselves in a kind of fetal position. Researchers believe the bodies gradually became desiccated or lost all moisture along with help from other people. They had ropes binding them in place, squeezing their legs against their chest. As their corpses dried out and the moisture seeped out of them, the ropes were tightened and the dead person was compressed into an even tighter position. They were making tightly packed mummies. It's what some researchers have termed guided mummification. The dead were guided into a particular state to keep them preserved in their hole in the ground. What's truly mysterious is that nobody knows why the people of the Sado Valley practice such a specific type of mummification. They've guessed it could have been to transport bodies more easily into their graves. However, that's just a theory. We know this process would have taken a lot of time. We also know that none of the mummy's skin decayed after they were put in the ground. They definitely did this on purpose, but we don't have a clue as to why. It's pretty astounding to think this was all happening 8,000 years ago. That's even before the Chinchorro mummies of Chile, previously believed to be the oldest mummies in the world at 7,000 years old. Number 7. 9,000-year-old beer Speaking of old things, 
Archaeologists working in the southeast of China have discovered microfossil residues left behind at a burial site. These residues have proved to be physical evidence of beer drinking from 9,000 years ago. The discovery is likely some of the oldest ritual alcohol consumption in the world. The discovery was made after archaeologists found ceramic vessels. These vessels contained starches, fungal remains, and plant residues that can all be traced back to alcohol. But why did these ancient people drink during funerals, besides the obvious grief? Researchers believe it was a way for them to honor the dead. Just as many cultures do today, they drank to the dead in ancient southern China. But the beer made back then was significantly different. It was made of rice and had a very low alcohol content. It was fermented, probably a little sweet, and would have been cloudy. Researchers believe alcohol was discovered totally by accident. When people realized that as grains were left to become moldy, they became sweeter and could produce mind-altering effects. Have you ever wondered how alcohol fermentation was discovered? This may be a clue. Number 6. Magical Incantation Bowls In 2003, after the war in Iraq began, thousands of stolen artifacts started showing up in international trade markets. These were illegally sold artifacts from thousands of years ago belonging to ancient civilizations. Recently, some of these artifacts were acquired by Israeli authorities following a raid on a property notorious for illegal antiquities trading. Everyone in the neighborhood knew who these guys were. The raid revealed hundreds of relics, a stash of coins, items made from bone and ivory, and perhaps some of the most mysterious of all, magical incantation bowls. According to a member of the Israel Antiquities Authority's Robbery Prevention Unit, the bowls are fairly common in Iraq and have been found at plenty of dig sites. These ones date back 1,500 years and were used in incantations. Each bowl is covered in Hebrew text, and one even has a drawing of a great demon on it. These bowls were inscribed with a plea for protection against evil, filled with some kind of offering, and then buried underneath the floor of a house as a charm. Ancient people living in Jerusalem, along with plenty of parts of the Mediterranean, believed such magical bowls would protect them from disease, being cursed, and from malicious demons. Do you think these objects should be allowed to be bought and sold by private collectors? What would you do with an ancient incantation bowl if you had one? Tell me in the comments, and make sure to subscribe if you haven't already for more videos like these. Number 5. Revolutionary Cannons Archaeologists rescued a dozen Revolutionary War cannons from the Savannah River in January 2022. It was a remarkable find, though researchers aren't sure exactly which old vessel carried these cannons or how they ended up in the river. The cannons were discovered when the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers began deepening the channel in Savannah's busy harbor. They uncovered the cannons, then hauled them out of the water. The archaeologist involved with the project says there is no telling what else could be down there. Much of the Savannah River is unknown, filled with everything from ancient Native American pottery to debris from a Civil War ironclad vessel that sank back in 1864. The best guess historians have now is that the cannons came from the HMS Rose. This was a famous British warship that fought colonists during the Revolution 250 years ago. The ship was scuttled by the British to block the channel and prevent the French from coming to aid the colonists as they tried to retake the city. Anyone here been to Savannah? Let me know in the comments below. Number 4. The Venus of Willendo The Venus of Willendo is a small figurine that was discovered in 1908 at a site near the village of Willendorf in Austria. It was initially dated to be 30,000 years old, making it one of the oldest figurines ever discovered on the planet. For that reason, it's been a huge mystery for the last century since it was uncovered. Now, it looks like the origin of the figurine has finally been identified. Researchers with the University of Vienna used microcomputer tomography to analyze the figurine. Based on the data they collected, along with sediments found at the site of its initial discovery, they believe it was made in Italy, near Lake Garda. It's a remarkable revelation because it means the Venus figurine started its journey south of the Alps and made it all the way to the Danube River in the north, at a time before humans had ever built a city or a village. Based on all these facts, researchers are now guessing it was carved by a culture of early humans who had just started learning how to use complex tools. They were still hunter-gatherers, but were becoming more and more advanced by the year. The group must have had a migration route along a river, going through the Alps into what is now Austria. They could have been chasing animals or moving to avoid poor weather, 
taking the Venus of Valendo with them on their travels. It must have been an extremely important figure, perhaps depicting some sort of prehistoric deity. Number 3. Roman Emerald Mines At the archaeological site of Sikait, located far in Egypt's eastern desert, an international group of researchers came across an area that was once mined by the Romans. Inscriptions at these ancient mines indicate that the Roman army had seized the region and taken control of all the work being done. These mines must have been extremely important and very valuable, enough for the Romans to station a whole legion of soldiers there to keep them safe. The site of Sikait dates back to at least the 4th century AD, around the time Rome had taken over Egypt and right before their empire collapsed. The team also discovered a massive temple, as well as some ritual sanctuaries lying in ruin. But the really interesting part, aside from the mines, is an ancient structure the experts are calling the Tripartite Building. They believe this was a huge storage complex where Romans kept a dizzying number of emeralds stashed. The emeralds were taken out of the mines, stored in this enormous structure, and then protected day and night by soldiers. The Romans weren't the only people to control these incredible emerald mines. The entire area was mined and occupied by a nomadic group of desert dwellers known as the Blemyes. It's also possible that the Blemyes built and oversaw the mines before the fall of the empire. Number 2. Ice Age Mammoth At a construction site in the United Kingdom, archaeologists came across the remains of a prehistoric beast. It happened in the small city of Devon, with the creature being dated back 60,000 years. Archaeologists found some other pretty cool stuff too such as mysterious artifacts left behind by an ancient civilization. But it's the mammoth bones that really caught everyone's attention. The researchers found one of the mammoth's tusks, some bones from its skull, and fragments of its skeleton. Even more, the archaeologists found ancient remains of a whole menagerie of animals. Ancient wolves, hyenas, foxes, deer, and even rhinoceroses. Yes, rhinoceroses once lived in the quiet countryside of Britain. It's likely these animals roamed the island during the last ice age, between 30,000 and 60,000 years ago. Another reason the discovery is so fascinating is that never before have so many ice age animals been found in a single spot in the UK. These samples of ancient bones have been overwhelming scientists. They are hoping that when they finally are able to catalog and analyze all of the remains, they'll have a clear picture of what life was like during the ice age in the United Kingdom. That's way before a single human ever stepped foot on the island. Number 1. Sunken Roman Boat A Roman boat sank in the Mediterranean Sea 1,700 years ago. It was only recently, though, that it was revealed and led to the discovery of a wealth of archaeological treasures. The boat was found off the coast of one of the busiest beaches in Mallorca, Spain. It had been a merchant vessel that carried wine, olives, and fermented fish sauce from Spain to Italy. But for whatever reason, it sank, was buried under the waves, and slowly got covered by sand at the bottom of the seabed. Unlike most shipwrecks that are found in open water, this one was discovered just six feet beneath the surface of the waves, at the very edge of the beach. Countless tourists have been swimming over the wreckage of the ship for decades without knowing it. This has led researchers to suggest the boat had been docked in the Bay of Palma when it was destroyed. But finally, the shipwreck was identified and archaeologists moved in to investigate. They are now calling it the Cez Fontanella's Wreck and have recovered over 300 ancient jars full of trade goods from the 4th century. In addition to the jars with all kinds of ingredients, things like oil and garum, archaeologists also found everyday items. They uncovered a leather shoe, a cooking pot, and a carpenter's drill. All this stuff is quite impressive and paints a unique picture of life on a merchant ship in the days of the Roman Empire. Thanks for watching! What's your favorite discovery that we talked about today? Let me know in the comments below and be sure to subscribe for more awesome videos. See you later. Bye.